So the growth of a fat cell, and this is a guy who's growing fat cells in his lab all the time. Um, and then we're taking fat cells from animals. We're taking fat cells from humans. So I want you to appreciate um, this, this experience and my knowledge on the topic because I know that people debate it and you're, you hear all kinds of sources of what makes fat cells grow and shrink. If anything you've heard disagrees with what I'm about to say, they're wrong. <laughs> Um, anyway, so what makes a fat cell grow? Well, you need two things, and you really do need two things, as much as they've been split into two different camps. You need elevated insulin, and you need sufficient energy. These are not the same, but they work together. Insulin provides the necessary, utterly essential signal to the fat cell to grow. But in the absence of fuel, the fat cell will say, well, I'm trying to grow, but I have nothing to grow with. You must have sufficient energy to fuel the growth that the insulin is stimulating. You truly cannot have fat cell growth with one but not the other. And, and we're going to go into that in more detail just so to, to explore what happens when we start manipulating the arrows a little bit. But let's just start with the purely energy-based um, paradigm. Um, and looking at, again, just the level of the fat cell. If you have elevated energy, you would have sufficient glucose. And fat cells love glucose, and they love turning glucose into fat, and they do so very, very well. But fat cells also have the ability to simply pull in fat. Now, I don't want my cartoon-ish image here to confuse. I don't mean to imply that the adipocyte actually directly pulls in a triglyceride molecule. That doesn't happen. But the triglyceride molecule will float by it, and then it will rip off individual fats from it. And I'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, these are the inputs. Of course, fat cells have an output, uh, and that would happen in the form of free fatty acids. So the overall balance of these caloric molecules in versus these caloric molecules out, this could at its simplest be defined as the caloric theory of why fat cells grow, or the caloric theory of why we get fat. More energy is going into the fat cell than is going out. That is the simplest version of this. However, even right here, we've encountered a bit of a conundrum. If it truly is, there's just excess energy in the blood, there's calories in the blood that need to be stored, um, what happens then with exercise? How is this regulated? So exercise is a perfect example. Because when we exercise, the amount of energy coming out of the fat cell goes up. Free fatty acids go up a lot. Um, but so too do energy, other energy sources in the blood, like glucose. Why isn't the fat cell picking in all of this glucose during exercise? Why isn't it getting the overall signal that it should be growing because of all this glucose that's available in the blood? And again, the fat cell loves taking in glucose to store for energy. Well, that's because even though there is plenty of energy in the blood, and indeed the fat cell is contributing to it, the fat cell knows that it's time to release fat rather than store it because of, any guesses? Yeah, hormones, specifically insulin. It is the hormone that tells a cell what to do with the energy that it has. We cannot assign a level of intelligence to a cell that it doesn't have. A cell must be told what to do. It's, a, it's one of my naughty little children. It must be told, heaven forbid, the child just do what it knows it should do on its own. Like the fat cell should just know what to do with the energy, it does not. It must be told what to do, and it is told what to do based on the input and the, the overall energetic state of the entire body. A cell alone doesn't understand what's going on in the entire body. It's hormones that tell one cell here, one cell here, what's going on. This hormone is hungry, it'll be some endocrine cell that will signal to the other cell that's storing the energy, telling it that it's time to give it up, or vice versa. It's hormones that communicate the overall needs of the body from one cell to the other, lest any cell become too selfish and only care about itself. 